Great. You're welcome to another edition of TLC with Ify. Thank you so, so much for joining. I love to be on time. I love to be quick. Um, so I won't waste your time. So today the topic is when she ends more. Okay. So we would always have situations where in most cases a woman would end more than her husband. So what is this woman supposed to do? And this is coming from one of the questions that we got from the South Series Live session last month where we talked about reviving marriage. So one of the things that um, NHN, so Nkechi Harry Ngunadi was telling us or was talking to the women was, um, you know, we should always see ourselves as joint partners in this whole marriage thing. So the man is not separate, you're not separate. And there will be times where you would need to support your husband. The question from one of the women was, so what if you support him, you give and you give and you give, and then when he gets back on his feet, he throws you out with the children. Uh, so this um, session, this Insta session is to respond to that. Now, that, would, that mostly happens, sorry, my music. <laughs> Okay, so that pretty much happens in situations, and that, that's what um, you know, gave me the, the, the thought in terms of running this particular topic. So first of all, one, there are three things I want us to know. When it comes to marriage anyway, the first thing I want us to know, and I want all of us to be on the same page before we get in, is that whether you earn more or you earn less, no matter what you have, what you owe your husband is respect, you know, the same way what he he's expected to love you as Christ loved the church. So you need to respect your husband. That's first one. That's whether you earn more, you earn less, whatever the situation. The second thing I want us to talk, think about right now is you need to remember your vows. When you took your vows, you said for better, for worse. So the Bible tells us that there will be times where if one person is down, you're expect, the other person is expected to lift the same person up. So in situations wherever the woman ends more, or in whatever situation, you need to remember your vows. And then the third thing is that we need to remember our purpose. Your purpose as a woman in a marriage is to be a companion and to be a helper. What does it mean to be a helper? A helper is someone that helps whoever is being helped to do something faster, to do something better, or to do something faster and better. Now, why I say it's important that we need to realize this is because as a helper, you are supposed to help. You're not supposed to take over the responsibility. Um, so we need, also need to be mindful of this. And so as I go through the key things that um, we should be mindful of, uh, or women should be mindful of in a situation where she earns more than her husband, um, I just want us to be clear on these three things. So just to recap the three things, it's one, um, in a marriage you should respect your husband. Whether you earn more, you earn less, whatever the situation, you should always respect your, mar your husband. You respect him for who he is and not for what he has. The second thing is that you should remember your vows. Your vows say for better, for worse. The Bible also says where one is down, the other should lift the other one up. So it's expected of you. God expects it of you. The third one is the fact that you are a helper. Always remember the purpose for which you are in that marriage. When um, purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable. So yes, you are a helper. You're not expected to take over the entire responsibilities, but you're supposed to support as well. Now, in a situation where a woman earns more, what is she supposed to do? I think the first thing, one, is you need to assess your situation and know is there a fundamental issue here. And what do I mean by fundamental? So let me give you examples. You're, you're working, your husband is working, he's doing his best, and by just, you know, faith or God's grace or whatever, you earn more. He's not lazy, he's working, you just earn more. I don't think there's an issue there. It's just time and chance happening to two different individuals. So in that situation, you don't rub it in that you earn more. Secondly, you work with whatever your husband has. If your husband tells you that it's Ikeja that he can stay in and you want to stay in Lekki, please stay in Ikeja. I remember <laughs> when I was getting married. No, I was, actually, I wasn't getting married. I just started working and we were doing a bridal shower for somebody in the office. And our HR manager, who is really, really like from a rich family, also married into a rich family, the advice she gave the person was sick. If your husband says that it's only fish he can afford, please cook only fish at home. If you want to eat chicken, you can eat chicken in the office. <laughs> now, it was a joke, but seriously, it was, it, was, it was insightful in that 
you're working, your husband is working, just by some, you know, God's grace or whatever, you earn more, please work with whatever he has. If he says he's Ikeja, he can stay in, please stay in Ikeja. Don't be the one to say, oh, you know what, I want to go to Lekki, I will pay for the one in Lekki. No, you're rubbing it in his face and you, are, you would most likely be insulting him. So you need to work with what your husband has. If you manage to convince your husband that you know what, let's move to Lekki and I will support you in part of the house rent. Please, be careful. Do not, do not um, halfway when you have moved to Lekki start touting your mouth that you are the one that paid for rent. That's where there will be problems. So if you know you cannot hold your mouth, just stay in Ikeja. So that's the first situation. Now, remember, we're talking the first step. If a woman earns more, what are the two things she should do? The first one I said is that she needs to um, check if there's a fundamental issue. And I said if both of them work and she just earns more just because of favor or she just got a better job, but he works, he's hardworking, he's bringing his share in, then work with him. Now, secondly, if, there, if he's lost his job or... Um, or you know, he's out, if he's out of a job, he's lost his job, or his income is not regular, then truthfully, as a wife, this is, where, this is where two major things are expected from you. One is that you support him emotionally, emotionally because, especially if your husband is out of a job or his business, his income doesn't come in regularly, you don't want him to start feeling like he's a failure because that's even worse for you. It could lead into other things, depression, anxiety, you know, and actually distancing, distancing himself from you emotionally. So you act as you should bring in emotional support. You actually not only making him feel comfortable with the funds in the house, but also make it easy for him to make decisions. Don't, because you are the one bringing the income, make decisions. And then, even though you're making things easy for him to feel like he's the head of the house, you should also proactively start thinking, how do I help my husband get back on his feet? So for example, if he's lost his job, and yet when you bring, when the income comes in, you know, you could do it jointly, he makes the decisions. Trust me, after a while, he's going to start getting restless. So the question for you is how, what do I need to proactively start doing to support my husband to be on his feet? If his business is bringing irregular income, how can I support him proactively so that his business starts bringing in regular income, so that he actually gets more confidence and doesn't feel like he's depending on you? Now, supporting obviously is there's going to be some level of financial support. And this is where the question of that lady at South Series came in. She was asking, she said, so what if you support and support and support and then he makes it or he stands on his feet and then he kicks you out with your children. Now, at this point, I want to bring in one of the parables. So we talked about, we have the parable of the, the seed. The, so the seed that was planted on, that was planted on the rocky place and then it did not grow. The one that was planted in thorns and it was choked up. And the one that was planted in a fertile um, soil and it brought forth great fruit. The truth is that any man you're married to today, the parable of um, that seed, the good seed, still takes place. And so for every man, there is a man that is rock. What do I mean? And there's the, wait, let me even finish. There's a man that is a rocky soil. There's a man that is a soil that has stones. And there is the man that is a fertile soil. So the man that is a rocky soil, what does it mean? It means that no matter how much you plant in that place, it will not yield fruit. So, where do things like this happen? And this is where, this is a topic for another week anyway, but this is where it's important that you marry a responsible man. You marry a man that understands his responsibilities as a man. Not just understanding it, but he has seen it. It's something that is in him. So a rocky soil for a man is mostly men that, for example, they were being spoiled. They don't understand that they have this responsibility. They don't even understand their responsibilities to their wives. They think it's a case of, you know, I just wear my clothes, I go out, I come back. If the wife feeds me, it's not a big deal. The truth is that there are men like that. And it's not just, about, it's not because of, it's not only about them, it's the, it's the way they were, they were trained, it's the way they grew up, it's what they know. So if you're married to that kind of man and then you, 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 you support that kind of, um, or you sow in that kind of, so Krista, please stop disturbing Chiki in case listening seriously. <laughs> So, um, and you invest in that kind of soil. It's a rocky soil. 
it would not yield fruit or it would not yield um, substance or what you're expecting. But what are you supposed to do? Will you just give up? Hell no, no. You're already married to the man, and then the Bible says that the heart of a king is in the heart of a king is in the Lord's hands. He turns it as he wills. If you look at Dubai, Dubai is a desert. But today there are plants growing in Dubai. How they do it? It just means you would need to put a much more effort than the next woman that when she was getting married, she was wise enough to marry a responsible man. I'm not saying that you are stupid, but I'm just saying that sometimes we're blinded and you're already gotten into it. So in this case, the truth is that. If you want to keep your home, then you need to put in more effort. It is not a lost situation. So what it means basically is um, this particular man that is a rocky soil. Uh, let me give you what happens in Dubai. So what happens in Dubai is that they have their desert. So every, I think it's August, I can't remember. They literally import like green plants. They have pipes that are underlaid on the, inside the ground that are naturally that are you know automatically and always sprinkling water because the issue is that there's no water so when they import these plants the water sustains it for a year and after a year it dies out they bring a new one now what does this mean for your husband so we are still talking on the fact that when you want to support your husband men fall into three categories based on the parable of the good seed there are men that there are rocky soils there are men that are um, tons, uh, then, or more like when you sow in them, it's like tons. And then there are men that are also like the fertile soil. We're still talking the rocky soil. And I was saying that it's not a lost cause, that because it's rocky doesn't mean that you will not get um, fruit out of it. It just means you will need to put in more effort. You need to prayerfully, you know, follow up with your husband. Pray to God to turn his heart from a heart of stone to a heart of flesh. That the things that are in his background that have made him or that make him to be a rocky soul, you know, God needs to um, help you out there. You, you know, prayer points like, you know, God should arrest him the way he arrested Saul. Because Saul, for example, anybody that was pre preaching the gospel to him at that point, it would have looked like a, it would have looked like a rocky um, soul situation. But God arrested that. So, that your husband is a rocky soul, the good thing is that the problem is, well, they say a problem is half solved when you understand it. So in this case, your problem is half solved when you understand that, see, this is the way this guy has been raised, this is his mindset, and so you prayerfully follow up on it. Talking, talking, talking will not change it. So that's the man with the rocky soil. Now, there's the second one. So there are men that are like the field of thorns. So when your seed, which is your substance, which is your support that you're putting into him to help... Um, What's that English that I use to help set him up, get him back on his feet? If you are working, if you are with a man that is a ton of field, let me tell you what it means. You know, in the parable, when the seed was dropped, the tons pretty much choked it, and so it did not grow out. Now, a man that is a ton of fields is one that is, the, the ton of fields are habits. So, habits are... So a man can have, you know, bad habits with regards to money, maybe gambling issues, drinking issues, or he might have tons of debts. You know, those are tons. Those are different things that are waiting for him. Or he has li literally a whole village waiting for him, and he doesn't know how to say no. So those are different tons in his life that when you put in your substance to support him and get him back on his feet those thorns will swallow it up it's not about him it's not about your seed you know your seed is not even allowed to take roots because those thorns take it up so what you do in that situation you need to deal with the thorns and and it depends on you know your husband best some men are pretty honest about the thorns around in their life and they see that oh these are thorns and i really wish i could work or i could get them off my life some men are, may still be in denial and don't think that those things are tons so you need wisdom to deal with them so if you're if you're with a man that understands that okay god i have this gambling problem or i have these debts and literally any money you give him to start a business or to get back on his feet will get swallowed by it what do you do then you don't you need to be wise about it both of you discuss it and if you're supporting then it's in support that may not necessarily be cash based so for example um let me see if 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 let's say he's out of a job and he wants to start a business let me enjoy my song <laughs> okay 
so let's say he wants to start a business i don't know selling selling bikes or something rather than giving him the money you could do an arrangement where he gets the bikes instead i don't know but these are things that you you need to w discuss with him such that and you need to also prayerfully you know um meditate on these things so that that substance that you are giving him doesn't get swallowed up by the tongues because we know how we women we are if you give once and you feel like he wasted it it's actually painful because it's your hard-earned money and you feel like he wasted it you just pretty much zone out so this is you trying to go the extra mile to ensure that that investment you are putting in him doesn't get um, swallowed up by the tons. And then there's obviously the third, so, so, one second, yes, but women are natural sponges, so most times we give what we get. Yeah, 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 we would always give, we would always give. I'm just telling you the principles behind giving so you understand, and you understand what to expect and what not to expect. And I always say you never borrow money to a man, it's bad debt, so just assume it has gone. <laughs> Anyway, so we have the third set of men, which are the men that are fertile soil. What is fertile soil? These are men that, yes, for that moment in time, they might be going through hardships. They might, you might be earning more than them. They can't bring as much to the table as you expect them to. But they are men that understand their responsibilities. They are men that understand what is expected from them. And all they need is just that income. These are men that when you support, you would get you would get a reward. You would get 30, 60, or even up to 100 fold. These are men that you see, and we, we hear stories of a lot of them. He once was down, and then he bounced back, and he literally bought his wife a house and was really spoiling the woman up and down. It's not like as if, um, um, like, like he, he, he is different. Well, actually, he is different. He's a different soul. So... Mm, I think what was I saying? So that's it. So we have the three three types of um, men in terms of when you earn more than your husband, um, what you should do. We have the men that are rocky soil. We have the men that are um, tons, so a field of tons, and we have the men that are fertile ground. So for those that joined, let me quickly recap. We're talking today on when she earns more. And I was saying it was coming from one of the questions we received from the women at the South Series Live session in August and she was saying so what happens when you keep helping your husband and giving and giving and he gets back on his feet and he abandons you and the children so we started out by saying that there are three key things I wanted us to be on the same page before we start one is that in marriage we're expected to love our husbands we're expected to respect our husbands for who they are not necessarily what they have because there are good times and there will be not too good times. Secondly, we should remember our vows. We vow to be with them in sickness and in health, in good times and in bad times. Nobody prays for the bad times, but truthfully, they strengthen us for the future. So when they come, we need to remember that we're there with them. The Bible also even enjoins us that when one person is down, the next person should pick him up. The third thing I also said that I wanted us to be on the same page on was the fact that we need to understand our purpose as women in marriage. We are there for companionship and as helpers. A helper needs to understand her place. You don't take over the responsibility. You help. That's your job. So as much as you want to support your husband in anything, you don't you don't pull the carpet from under him. A lot of women, we do that a lot. And that's where we start to spoil the men that we are married to because you take over his job and truthfully, what's he doing? What's, 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 what is he now working for? Because... If he does do that, he will spend it on himself or he spend it on someone else. So you support, but you don't take over his responsibilities. Um, so that's the three things. Then I now said, fine, if you're in a situation where you earn more than your husband, the first thing that you should do is to find out is there a fundamental issue. If both of you pretty much are working, he's hard working, you just by faith are earning more than him, it's not a big deal. Don't rub your money in his face. Work with what he has. Um, and then let him make, keep making the decisions. Whatever is the extra, save it for the future, save it for the children. You don't know, you need them. Um, and then we said if there's a situation where, for example, he's out of a job or he earns significantly less than you or he's, he doesn't bring in regular income, your, your responsibility as a wife and a helper is, is not just to you know, make the atmosphere livable for him in that you don't rub it in his face that he doesn't earn but that you you bring him in in terms of decision making and all that but you should proactively put in place a plan to get him back on his feet putting in place a plan to get him back on his feet might require some 
given from you actually in most times will require some substance leaving you and that's where the question comes in how am i sure that when i invest in this man when he becomes when he stands on his feet he will he will also reciprocate and we talked about how men are three different kind of soils based on the parable of the good seed if you're sowing in your husband and your husband is a rocky soil a rocky soil is one where you plant it would not bring forth fruit and it's possible because of his his upbringing he's just grown up and he doesn't know the responsibilities expected as a man you'll be surprised um, but in that case you don't give up you actually ask God to come in you ask God to intervene because the Bible says that the heart of a king is in the hands of God and he turns it as he wills if God could arrest um, yes it's, it, it's if God could arrest Saul, then um, then he can do same for your husband so Chike is asking is it not commonwealth regardless of who ends more yes that's why I was saying it it should be commonwealth but remember it works different ways for different couples i believe that when it comes to family income it should be commonwealth and that's why i was saying that if if um she earns significantly more or he's out of a job when she brings it in then you usually should let the man make the decisions because he's still the head of the house it's whether you earn more or he earns more you should have that um, situation in your home where he is still the head of the house because that's your way of showing him respect so yes i agree with that but you can in, in different marriages it works differently it's interesting how the world has you know pretty much worked out um finances in marriages but i believe that you know when it comes to finances in marriages it should be commonwealth um and then well, we talk about the men that are tons of, <laughs> of field of tons and these are men that have maybe habits or different things in their lives that when you pour forth your substance, it would not bring forth fruit immediately. And this could be like loans, debts, bad habits. In this situation, both of you should sit down and actually discuss it and how that investment is going to bring forth fruit irrespective of the tons around. Um, you can also proactively go ahead if you feel like, if you think that he might not be able to overcome those tons, to put in place that help in such a way that the tons don't swallow it up. Um, and then we talked thirdly about the men that are, uh, what's that English? The men that are um, like a good field, a fertile soil. In those men, trust me, you can be rest assured that what you invest, you, you would reap multiple folds. So you just prayerfully support him and what he's doing. Please do not micromanage him, do not overtrack him because it might come across to him like you don't believe in him. So just be there supporting him being intense in terms of asking questions you know how is he doing and prayerfully support him you see you see the bible says that what you what you sow you will reap but there's also a prayer in i think it's in isaiah where it says you will long eat the fruit of your labor you will not sow and another man will reap so there are instances where you sow and another man would reap so as you support your or, or you nurture your good field and you invest in your good field please be so prayerful that you would actually reap that because they are little foxes that's how that is just but in summary thank you so much for staying um, this long in any situation where you earn more please um do not do not rub that in the face of your husband do not do not diminish the confidence of your husband because you earn more it's totally wrong it's totally wrong the reason why you earn more at that point in time is because God has decreed it so and tables could turn at any point in time always make your husband feel like the head of the house when children ask you for money because the truth is that children are very very smart and they know who has the money but it's left for you to teach them what should happen so if your child comes to you and asks for money tell them they should go and ask their father when their father asks, comes back you people discuss in your bedroom how the funds are going to be disbursed and let him disburse it always have your husband in private in public before family before the children before your extended family he's the head of the house and it's how you portray that that it's packaging is what you do that everybody will see but uh, actually it's packaging is the wrong word it's not packaging it's inside it's a lifestyle when you respect him in thoughts in words and in spirit then it's easy for you to respect him in real life whether people are there or people are not there so that's it for today any questions any thoughts ah, chiki has given me plenty thumbs up 
Hi, TP. Ah, TP, you joined very early. You. <laughs> Any questions? Okay. I think we are good for today. Okay, then. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Let's uh, say a quick prayer before we end. Father, I thank you for today. I thank you for the different people that you brought upon this platform today. Thank you for your word that came forth. Lord, I ask that indeed your word begins to work in their lives long after this. Begin to inflame their hearts and their minds with understanding. For women in this situation, Lord, give them the strength to be able to go through it. Give them the wisdom. But most of all, intervene in their homes and then make it beautiful. Let money not be an issue in any home. The lack of it or the abundance of it or who brings and who spends. Lord, give both parties wisdom on how to deal with this. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, bye.